I've been seeing a lot of chatter about pixel perfection and Godot in my sphere of the internet lately. It's gotten pretty loud, and a lot of it is misinformed. As a guy who's worked almost exclusively in pixel perfect art for over two decades, I figure what better way to quell the noise than to add my own voice to the cacophony. This lesson covers what pixel perfection is, why pixel perfection is an issue on modern displays, how to achieve pixel perfection in Godot, and whether or not you need to go further than what's readily available in the engine for true pixel perfection. Everything is chaptered out if you're looking to jump around. So what is pixel perfection? Games that use pixel art and pixel perfect games are not the same thing. It's sort of like how a square is a rectangle, but a rectangle isn't necessarily a square. Pixel perfect games use pixel art, but not all games that use pixel art are pixel perfect. Pixel art is drawn on a grid of square pixels, and for a game to be pixel perfect, all of its drawn assets need to fit neatly within that pixel grid. That means that your sprites can't move across the screen like this. Instead, they have to move like this, in full pixel increments. It also means you can't rotate your sprites like this, or scale them like this, as it breaks them out of the grid. Instead, you work rotations into animations, and scale up, but never down, in increments of two. Unless you're okay with rotation and your scale looking a little jank as the engine tries to resolve how to place the pixels on the grid. Modern digital displays have their own pixel grids, the physical display pixels of the screen. When you try to fit a drawn pixel grid onto a display pixel grid, it doesn't always line up nicely, and if your drawn pixel grid does not match up to the display pixel grid exactly, the display will compensate by drawing the pixels in your art at different widths and or heights. For example, these columns of drawn pixels might get 20 display pixels horizontally, but then these columns would only get 19. When this object is in motion, the changing of drawn pixel sizes causes a weird jitter called pixel shimmer. Pixel shimmer is ugly and bad, and you want to avoid it by using a drawn pixel grid that can fit neatly into most digital display resolutions. That makes pixel perfect games the most resolution dependent type of game you can make. These days, the most common display resolutions are 720, 1080, 1440, and 4K. Those are all in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, so that's the aspect ratio we'd want to target for our pixel perfect games. Let's take a look at a couple of possible resolutions for our art. First, 256 by 144. The original family of Game Boys had a vertical resolution of 144, so this would be a perfect resolution to capture that look and feel at a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. At 720, 1440, and 4K, your art would scale perfectly and you wouldn't see pixel shimmer. But at 1080, the most widely used resolution by a country mile, you'd be dealing with pixel shimmer due to the fractional values unless you did some special handling, like only scaling up to 1792 by 1008 because 256 by 144 does fit into that resolution, and then compensate for the rest of the screen by adding black bars to the top, bottom, and sides. Next, let's look at 320 by 180. This is a super common pixel perfect resolution for indie games. This resolution scales perfectly to all common 16x9 resolutions, so at a glance it seems an ideal choice. However, if you're looking to emulate the look and feel of something like the Game Boy, there are way too many pixels vertically. If you're looking to emulate the NES, it's way too few pixels vertically. That system utilized 224 of its 240 vertical pixels a full 44 pixels more than this resolution, and at these sizes, 44 pixels is substantial. The SNES and Genesis rolled with resolutions similar or higher, so the same applies to trying to capture their look and feel. Lastly, let's look at 384 by 216. This resolution is great for NES, SNES, and Genesis style games because the vertical resolution is only eight pixels away from those systems' 224 effective vertical resolutions. It handles 1080 and 4K, the most widely used resolutions, but unfortunately it doesn't scale properly into 720 or 1440, so those would require special handling. All of the other low-res 16x9 resolutions that fall between the three here do not scale into the higher resolutions neatly at all. So you can see there are decisions to be made. Do you drastically limit your screen space for perfect scaling? Do you force a CRT shader onto your players at the wonkier resolutions to make the shimmer less noticeable? Do you scale those resolutions in a way that lets you compensate with the black boxes? Or 
do you just accept the pixel shimmer? There is no right or wrong answer. And that's one of the questions that makes Pixel Perfect Games a unique and challenging beast. Okay, so how do you do the Pixel Perfect thing using the Godot engine? The first thing you can do is outside of Godot. Make sure you're drawing all of your assets with your chosen drawn pixel resolution in mind. When you import your assets, if they're looking a little blurry, you'll need to change their scaling to nearest neighbor to make them crisp. You can do this project-wide by navigating to Project, Project Settings, then on the left side under Rendering, click on Textures, and under the default Texture Filter setting, select Nearest. And voila! Next, you're going to want to change your window settings. Navigate back up to Project, Project Settings, and then on the left side, look for Display Window. If you don't have Advanced Settings toggled on, do that now. In the Viewport Width and Height settings at the top, enter the drawn pixel resolution that you decided on. Then at the bottom of the Size section, for the Window Width Override and Window Height Override, enter the resolution you want the game to run in while you're testing. The next setting to change is the Stretch Mode. Scroll a little bit further down in the same menu and you'll see Stretch Mode. The only correct setting here for Pixel Perfect Art is Viewport, and it will tell you that if you mouse over Mode and take a look at the descriptions. What you're doing by updating these settings is forcing the game to run under that lower resolution. Then the override setting blows that image up after all of the logic has been handled. Last but not least are the snap settings. On the left side, scroll a little bit further down under Rendering and select 2D. There you'll see Snap 2D Transforms to Pixel and Snap 2D Vertices to Pixel. Now, the mistake a lot of people make here is they either choose Snap 2D Vertices to Pixel or they choose both. But the only one you should select for Pixel Perfect Games is Snap 2D Transforms to Pixel. If you look at the mouse over explanations, well, they're a bit confusing, but both recommend that you use Snap 2D Transforms to Pixel alone. So what's the deal here? The Snap 2D Transforms to Pixel setting snaps all position, scaling, and rotation properties for all canvas item nodes. So that's all control nodes and all node 2Ds. Combined with the window settings that we set before, that makes our game run pretty much exactly like old games of the time did. The Snap 2D Vertices to Pixel option moves all corners of your art independently, and it's only useful for very niche cases where you're manipulating your art via code, and since all corners move independently, it can cause visual distortions. So Snap 2D Transforms to Pixel it is, and only Snap 2D Transforms to Pixel it is. If you go on the misinformed cesspool, that is Reddit, you'll likely be told you need to do something like make a custom integer-based character controller with a custom raycast collision system to really, truly achieve pixel perfection. But is there any truth to that? Well, I've made a few integer-based character controllers. Look, here's some code from a simple one. And I've made a custom pixel-perfect raycast collision system that I ported over from Unity. Dang, look at that Node 2D colliding and sliding. I could get three to four videos worth of content telling you that, yes, you need to set yourself up that way, so it'd be to my benefit if that were true. But it's not. Your settings are just wrong. Set up your project like I showed you, and you can use Character Body 2Ds and their built-in move and slide methods to your heart's content while still maintaining pixel perfection. The window settings we changed early on ensures a one-to-one -one relationship between display pixel and single drawn pixel in your art. Then the snapping setting makes sure everything in our game snaps to full pixels, i.e. the pixels in your art. So by setting the proper resolution, window scaling, and snapping, you're already doing everything that a custom solution could do. If you've got those bits set correctly and you're still experiencing jitter when moving, check to see if the issue is your follow camera. You need to make sure your camera's position is updating after the follow target's position, otherwise the camera is eternally trying to catch up. Set its process priority to a higher number to make sure that it's updating after your follow target, and you should be good to go. That's Pixel Perfection in Godot. 
I hope this video was informative, answered some questions, and maybe helped fix some issues some folks might have been having. Until next time, I wish the best to you and yours. I look forward to seeing you again, and happy Devon in the meantime.